Okay, welcome to chapter 13 now. Uh, all I've done here, guys, is um, gone to Subtool Master and done low, visible, uh, low res visible, uh, just so it's a lot quicker to save. Uh, we're starting to grab, get a bit of a stockpile of project files here, so I'm probably going to clean them up a little bit later. Uh, it's not going to have any benefit for us. It's going to move on to the boots now. Uh, just going to go into solo mode and I'm going to up the resolution. And just going to figure out, I think these are <laughs> more than likely going to be leather. Leather's the material of the day, it seems. Just going to grab the standard brush and enhance a few of these wrinkles. Probably going to go into asymmetry. So I'm going to turn off symmetry on here. Smooth down some of the wrinkles. And just add a few little differences from side to side. Just going to turn the intensity down. Just the brush size. And slowly build up a few different wrinkles around the flexy areas of the boot. Turn the intensity back up again. reduce the wrinkles in this area and possibly cut across with another one just to make it a little bit different from the other side it's going to hold down alt and flatten this bit out and smooth it Going to do the same to the wrinkles up here. Smooth them down, knock them back. And I think I'm just going to change the direction in which this wrinkle went. So it's going to pop one up here, I think, and just bring that down in a different way. just to make the boots a little bit more individual I'm not going to go all out because Charles, it's not something that you're really going to focus too much on anyway uh, if it's in a game To really take this stage to kind of fiddle with things, make them a bit more unique. You don't want to see too much of the same wrinkle on each side, so knock a few back, maybe replace them with another type of wrinkle. Okay, it's a bit more unique on each side without having to do too much work. It's always a bonus. So, a reason I didn't do this with the, uh, the gloves 
because it's very rare they actually see both hands side by side. If you put both hands side by side, then you'd be able to easily tell the difference, but not quite so much when there's a body in between. Okay, so I think that'll do it. Just gonna jump the resolution up again. Let's get a smoother surface. It's still a bit lumpy, but we can always tidy up the normal map when we bake it out. Probably won't pick up some of these finer lumps anyway. So to detail these, uh, we're gonna do very much the same as before. Going to switch to our drag rectangle. Load up a leathery skin alpha, preferably something a bit different, maybe a bit finer like this one here. Switch over to Z sub, stretch it on, turn the intensity up. Mm, looks like we might need to change that to Z add on this one. Yeah, that works better. Let's drag it onto the surface. I'm being rather lazy with this. Um, I will cut a few sort of more um, uh, unique sort of patterns into it, I think. But most of the, the resolution of the boots' textures aren't going to be all that high, so we can get away with just using texture to do a lot of it. Just going to smooth it back a tiny bit, so they definitely don't look comfortable. So, just making them look a little bit softer. All I'm doing here is just holding down shift and just tapping on an area very quickly and not stroking or uh, dragging the brush along the surface. Just knocking back so it's more of a subtle texture. Okay. So let's add some stitches to it. Probably go with the same stitches that we used on the leather up top. Or maybe the double fold fold and stitch. See what it looks like. See what kind of resolution we got to play with as well. So that'll work quite nicely. Yeah, a little bit blocky. See how many polys we're working with? Yeah, six hundred and six thousand. We can jump that up another time. Fade, help fade the detail back a little bit as well. Let's carry that seam on over. Quick note on these brushes as well, I have shared them on previous videos, but I'll also place links in the description for each chapter on here as well. Because I'm nice like that. Some seams. Looks like they're put together in different ways. I think I'll just go ahead and do a different type of seam. 
possibly one of these simple ones and just put that in so it follows down here that really doesn't behave well when you curve it so let's just do it straight again doesn't have to be grey, we're not going to see that in much detail at all so let's add a seam at the back let's go with this uh, let's go with this one along the bottom Let's carry on the seam around the base of this fold here and then just do the same on the other side. Just do that other seam on the front of the boot here. Probably wasn't the best idea to do that, but yeah, well, we've got it now. Actually, that's a better seam to do it with. Just smooth that back down. Just get rid of it. And we'll pop this over the top. Cool, so we got a pair of boots. Not really going to bother putting detail underneath the boots as it's not necessary. It's going to be lumpy enough with the, the normal apps on there, and the texture will do absolutely fine on that. So, let's just put a few wrinkles on here. So, just turned off solo mode and selected the, uh, the straps, the boot straps. I'm going to set my standard brush back to dots with no alpha. Take the intensity down and the draw size as well. Same for the other straps, doesn't have to be so tidy as this won't be geometry, it'll just be uh, baked in with the texture. Same on the other side, slightly different wrinkles. I've been very careful with these, they're not massively important. So boots and bootstraps. These already have subdivision levels, and we're not going to do anything to those. It's going to be texture. 
So next we'll have to just move on to the belt. Let's turn his apron off. And all the bits and pieces that go along with it. And we're left with the belt and the buckle. So let's see what we can do on those. So we're going to start off just by subdividing everything. Oops, or so going up the subdivision levels rather. There we go. So there's not going to be a whole lot that we want to do on the belt. We'll probably add some stitching around the edges just to kind of embellish it a little bit. So probably want to smooth down the edges a tiny bit as well. So the edges should be creased. So we're just going to take our draw size down. It's going to hold down shift and smooth our way around. That's a little bit too much. I think we need another subdivision level on there. And just going to take the intensity of the smooth brush down. Just going to round off this edge a little bit. Same on the other side. <clears throat> okay. So let's see how many polys we're dealing with on the belt. Can't imagine that's too much. 9,000, yeah, definitely not too much. Subdivide another couple of times. <clears throat> so now we've got 950,000. Let's see what we can do with 950,000. Let's just try a double back stitch on here. Not too bad, a bit too intense. Let's turn on Lazy Mouse. Not intense enough. <clears throat> I'll do. Probably do with a bit more resolution. Let's just divide one more time. We're going 3.8 million now, so we definitely shouldn't need any more polygons than that. I think before I do any stitching, <coughs> any stitching detail on there. So I'll have to excuse my throat today, guys. Um, I think we're just going to just do some light surface detailing. So let's see what we've got in here. I think we've got an orb cracks brush, which is usually quite nice for doing some stylized cracks, but maybe it's a little bit too cartoony. Yeah, a bit too cartoony. So let's see. Let's grab ourselves an alpha. Let's get the drag rectangle. Gonna import an alpha. Just gonna head to my resources box. Head to my alphas box. And we're gonna go with I think we'll just go with leathery skin. I'm just going to import some different ones from what I did last time, see what kind of options we have. So we've got some really over the top leather. I think I'll go with this one, that's leathery skin 81. So just need to switch that over to Z sub. Going to bring the intensity down. Just 
drag it out onto the surface. Do it in different directions to kind of change up the, the surface a bit. So we don't see too many recognizable parts. nicely I think. Let's just knock it back a tiny bit. So, so we're using the smooth brush, just gonna put the intensity up a bit more. Gonna drop down the subdivision level. So I can have more of an effect on it. So it's gonna give us a, a nice sort of surface to get some texture from. The normal maps aren't going to be too over the top for it. Let's get some stitches in there. Let's go back to our double seam. Really need to smooth that out some more. So I'm just going to drop a subdivision level. Smooth out the top of the belt. Same on the bottom. So I'm not going to go too overboard in terms of texturing on this belt because when we get this laid out on the UV map, uh, I doubt it's going to be all that visible. So don't have to worry too much. I really don't like all that gridding that's going on there, all that stamping. So I'm just going to undo that. Just going to redo that smooth. I'm going to choose a different seam. I think we'll go with the same one that we used on previous leather sections. Take the draw size down, the intensity down, the intensity back up. There we go. Bottom. There we go. So, let's move on to this belt buckle. Subdivide. So, turn on symmetry. It's going to be fairly off because we've moved it out of position. Let's just move that back into position. It's not going to be perfect, but it's not far off. Not too far off. Let's um, let's just go and press set pivot. Where did that go? Ah, there it is. Let's just turn on solo mode. We'll get this uh, sculpted up, and then we'll move it back into place. So let's kind of have a look what's going on with this. Grab a clay build brush. We 
should have uh, poly groups on here. So I'm just going to turn on poly frame. Going to control and control shift and click on the poly frame to make it visible. Going to mask it. Uh, just going to turn off my hidden parts and then I'm just going to invert my mask. So I just want to smooth these down a bit now. It's going to smooth down the entire thing. And I just sort of start building it up. So I've got a slight issue there with our symmetry. It's no problem. Smooth things down until things start behaving correctly again. Which things are going to be slightly off. Probably would have been a good idea to actually finish this off before I uh, <coughs> uh, appended it to our main subtool. But yeah, well, we'll make do with what we've got. Looks like we could do with getting a few more polys on there, so we're just going to subdivide again. Now we've got uh, 483,000 on there, so that should be fine. Let's just, once again, mask off this section. If I press the right button. There we go. <clears throat> and invert it. And we should have a few more polys with which to get this sort of mouth in the right kind of position. So I've got a bit of a random crease in there. It's okay. Just use clay build. Just going to fill that in, smooth it back. Just drop down a couple of subdivision levels so I can correct that massive indentation. It's caused by the polling, thanks to it being a, a cylinder and being strewn with triangles. Jump up the subdivision levels and smooth them out as you go. Let's get his nose in there. So I'm not going to go too insane with this, just really want to get it uh, sort of hinted at. As again, I don't think we're going to end up with enough resolution sort of in this area on the game game resolution model to really sell all this stuff, all this detail. So mostly just kind of bringing out the main forms. And 
I think that'll do it. It kind of looks like it's just been uh, sort of emblazoned on here. That'd be a nice little detail for people to find if they're looking up close. Just undo this mask. Turn off solo mode and let's move this back into position. Let's turn off symmetry. <clears throat> let's get that back in. That'll do fine. Cool. So let's uh, let's see what we've got. Let's go ahead and turn on all the bits and pieces. First of all, let's just uh, <coughs> get these activated, and then we'll be able to turn them on and off as we go. So let's turn on all his tools, his pouch, uh, the apron. Actually, that's not an apron. What's that we've got there? Oh, that's the uh, the clasp at the back. So we'll just rename that uh, apron clasp. I think that's got some subdivision levels. Yep. We'll turn his apron on. We're going to head up to Z plugin. And I'm going to go to Subtool Master and then High Res Visible. Let's give that a second to do everything. Shouldn't be too taxing. Though I do worry whenever I see that little circle sparkly thing. Mm -hmm. There we go. Everything all set at high res. So we've got a decent amount of detail on there. Now there's one thing which we really need to do, and that's to give him a big hammer, a really cool big hammer. So, if you join me in the next chapter guys, we're going to get his hammer sorted, and then we're going to move on to texturing, although I think before we do that, let's just touch up these, these accessories a bit first. Let's just add a subdivision level to them, and let's just grab, say, H-Polish. Just beat up the corners and things a bit. Smooth out the edges. Use trim dynamic on some of the corners just to get a nice smooth edge on them. Make them look a little bit more beat up. We're not going to go ahead and detail these much more than this, to be honest. It's uh, a little bit more pointless as they're not going to be very high res so texture will do most of that for us don't think these pliers really need much I might just drag on a bit of a bit of one of the alphas that we've got selected it's not going to make any sense but the resolution that these are going to have you're not going to be able to make out what surface is on them anyway. Let's just subdivide these players. These will look quite nice with uh, a specular map applied to them. Let's just wear the edges a little bit. Just so there's uh, something for the specular to really bring out for us. Quick save. Not the best of times as usual. <clears throat> Come on 
once I brush save it. It's going to take a while to save when you have all of your sub, uh, sub tools visible at high resolution as well. So when I save these files, I tend to put everything down to the lowest resolution, or at least hide a lot of the uh, geometry. So I turn them off in the sub tools menu. Yeah, that's going to work for us. That's fine. So uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's everything. Quite happy with that. So come see me in the next chapter, guys, and we'll go through doing the hammer. We'll probably start off in Max. Uh, I might bring through one of his gloves as a scale reference. Uh, we'll build his hammer, and from there we'll start detailing it, making it look pretty awesome. Cool. So join me in the next chapter, guys. Uh, happy sculpting. You take care.